Welcome back to yet another video of channel CodeX. In this video, we will learn about state mixin. So we'll be creating this awesome demo inside this video. So make sure to watch complete video and in between we'll learn so many things like get API call, handling errors and fixing things real time. So let's get started with today's tutorial. So here is a brand new project and this one I created with get CLI. Now, if you want to know more about Git CLI, you can find in the description and what it does. But uh, if you created a project with normal flutter command or just from VS code, that should work really fine. Now, meanwhile, the project is running. Let's go to the home controller. And that is the benefit of creating with Git CLI that all the views, controller and binding, you get all those things pre-made. So you don't have to waste time in there. Now to work with a state mixing, you have to extend your class with another class. And the way we do is with the keyword with. So just define a state mixing and then you can define what data you are expecting. So it can be integer, string, list of string or any custom object you have made. Perfect. So let's go ahead and start working on the implementation. So let me just collapse this window from here and we're good to go. So the first thing which I want to show you is how to read that state data. So you have to say controller dot OBX. So remember that it's not OBS, it's OBX. That will give you the state mixing result. By default, it starts with the loading state. So you will see circular progress indicator and we'll see in a moment how to change that. But before that, let me show you what all different states you will get inside the controller OBX. So there's a on loading. And of course, instead of circular progress, you may want to change it to linear progress or something else you would like to do. And there's a on empty state, like what happens if the data is not present. So you can show your custom text message or any animation J if you want to play you can show that now there's a last state which is very important what happens if something goes wrong so you will get that data back from the state and that that is there inside the error variable if you want to use that and then you can show any custom message or any layout and in, in particular any view because it's all widgets right how cool is that without declaring a single variable without having a stream or subscription or future builder you are getting all the different states loading error empty and you just have to like control when what event is triggered so let's go ahead and do the actual part where i'll be implementing actual api from http and then we'll handle all the different scenarios so for that let's go ahead and add http package and let's import that so that we can call get post method whatever we're going to use it and of course we are not going to get into detail of http methods and get and post call in this video but uh, what i will do is quickly use http get to fetch json response from one of my github page and then we will write all the operation what happens when it is empty what happens when it throws some error and what happens when the data is fetched successfully so first thing you perform when you fetch any response from any url or any api is you check whether it was success or not there are different status of HTTP protocol 200, 500, 401, 404, which you might have seen earlier. So once the status code is 200, which is a success case, I'm going to convert the string into JSON array because we know the data type uh, looking at the response. And then I'm going to convert it to list of string. And now here's the most important part. You have to trigger this method change and provide the actual data and status. So we say that data is comments and it is success case let's see how does it work we have a label here on the screen and of course we don't want to just display a label so let's go ahead and show actual comments for that i'm going to use list view dot builder to generate all the comments and this is going to be very simple list view binding. I'm just going to use a list style widget, which has its own template. And the data is already there with us in the state variable. 
only we have to make sure that we have to perform a null check because it might be null the state variable so for the demo purpose i'm just skipping it to the part where i can see something nice with the leading of this circle of tar and this is some nice comments on the channel you can think like that all right so we have the success state where we are showing the list and now let's talk about some of the failure cases the first state we will handle is what happens when the data is like there's no data it's empty and it's not a failure case it's just uh, you know good idea to handle that situation so that user is aware uh, what is happening so if comments is empty it's as simple as that then change the state to this data which is like an empty array you can provide null if you want to and then say status is of rx status dot empty that's it so now whenever this situation happens automatically you will be displayed with the uh, placeholder or like any any view you have provided for empty states now let's go ahead and implement the error case so anything other than status 200 will be treated as error so what you can do similar to empty you will just say change to null data and provide the status of rx status error and here additionally you can provide uh, some message or some data which you want to handle in the user interface so maybe you can provide the status code or any stack trace or whatever information you just want to display uh, for the user at this point we are almost done with the implementation part so only part left is to perform the test cases so what i'm going to do for that i'm going to go on my github account and modify the file where we are uh, reading this data from and then we will simulate the empty case and the error case and all of that so let's go ahead and do some modification on github real quick So here is the file I'm going to just remove all of these strings so it becomes an empty array just like this one and I'm going to just commit it. Now on GitHub uh, it takes a little bit time like 10 seconds or 20 seconds to reflect the changes but this is just for demo purpose if you have a real time API you can test with that and this is just for you know working with api i just want to show you the concept so uh, keep refreshing until the data is uh, changed here we have it empty array and now let's see in the mobile application once we restart how does it behave so there's a loading state and there's nothing wow that's that's wrong okay so let's go ahead and figure out why we are not able to see the empty text maybe it's going behind the notch no safe area also didn't help now this is something out of syllabus so let's go ahead and try to do some work around so i'm going to put some color to the text maybe it is white that's why you're not able to see uh, let's put it a black color and still we can't see well that's amazing and let's see if it hits the breakpoint or not if it's executing the proper uh, code so here it comes is empty yes it is empty and it should go to change status to empty well that's perfect oh so it is executing the empty state and then it is going to success state as well so i should have written if else statement uh my bad so let's go ahead and change that real quick so if uh, it is empty change status to empty otherwise make it success don't make it success in case of empty right so now you are seeing the all caught up message and of course you can uh, modify the font size or if you have like a better message or gif image or whatever animation you want to play you can do all of them here and now finally we will try to simulate the error condition and for that what i will do i will go to github same file and i will just delete it the reason because once you delete it you will start getting 404 not found status and that we already have handled so if status is anything other than 200 you are going to get that error message and that will be handled in the ui so let's go ahead and give it a run and see for yourself uh, how does it work perfect so we are getting the message and of course if you want to change 
the message or if you want to read that information from the error event then you can do that and show custom message or server message to the end user so it's that simple to maintain different states of your data with the help of state mixing and of course if you want to add some shimmer effect or you want to handle the error with a better message custom widgets you are free to do so and lastly you are not limited to just one state variable you can have as many observable as you want and listen to that in your ui as you do in a normal controller so i hope you people enjoy this video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe the channel if you are new here and leave your feedbacks in the comment section below see you in the next video till then happy coding